Welcome to the Pigsit and Donahue Research Group how-to videos. This video will show you how to run an IR on our thermoscientific FTIR spectrometer. So, as you see, I already have the computer up. Um, there is no password to it, so it should just wake right up whenever you move the mouse. You're going to come over here to Omnic Paradigm. It has a uh, it has a triangle with, made of four triangles and has thermoscientific as the uh, in the bottom there. And so you will see this screen come up, Omnic Paradigm, whenever you double click on it. You have to give this just a couple of seconds to warm up. As you see right now, the IR is not connected. And now you can see that it has recognized the instrument. This is the starting screen, so you can open different files from here. Um, and you can actually use these tabs to help guide you. So right now, I only have the open background sample and settings available to me. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you can either hover over measure background or they have a preview and measure background button. They both do the same thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on this one since I'm here. You will then, either way, whatever one you click on, you will see this background preview. This is the position that the arm must be in in order to take a good background. Here we're just trying to make sure that we get readings of the carbon dioxide levels and anything that, and any oxygen that might affect the readings of our IR. So now that you know what position the arm must be in, we can now start our background measurement. You do not have to name this, but oftentimes if you put in a name for your first sample, it will go ahead and use that as like the measured background for that sample. These backgrounds hold for about an hour to two hours. So if you have a lot of samples, you might be able to run several samples on this one background. As you see, it only takes a few seconds for the background to be taken, and this is now our background. So we don't have to necessarily, so we can keep this for all of our, uh, for all of the IR readings. So, what I typically do is I go to measure sample, and then you're going to enter the sample name. For this sample, GJR5-100. Dash four. So you don't want to click OK just yet. You want to make sure that you have your sample on the IR before you click OK. So once I have the name set up on the laptop, in the Donahue group, we, are, we use our NMR samples. Um, it does not take a lot of solvent, so this one, as you can see, has been waiting for a while and is actually very low. You only need a drop or two of the compound to go on in order for it to uh, for it to read. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of our clear pipettes and I am going to put it into the NMR tube and tilt the NMR tube so then that way I can get some so I can actually get that capillary action to get some of the solution. So now, oh, that wasn't enough. So once I have enough on there, so once I have enough on there, I put it directly onto, there's a little dot here. As you can see, the sample is in the center of the plate. It is right directly on that 
spot, so that is actually where you will do the detecting. So with the sample in place, you wait for the solvent to dry. You then bring this arm over. It, is a, it gives a little bit of pushback, but it should be easy enough to move. And then you're going to twist this And you're going to make sure, so when you twist it, you're going to make sure that you only twist it once, so then that way you hear it click. And that click will indicate to you that it is all the way pressed down. When the arm is pressed down, you can go ahead and click OK, and this will start the measuring. So as you see, we can start to see some sharp peaks being formed. These are nice and defined for us. But as you see, this is in absorbance, not in percent transmittance. So as you see, the completion bar. So like I had said, this is in ab absorbance, not in percent transmittance. So you're going to go up here to the top and use this like cycle. So it has ABS or absorbance, change into tr percent, trend, percent T, and with that, it goes ahead and changes it for you. Now what we want to do is we want to peak pick. So we're going to go over here to identify and find peaks. And you're just going to make this region wide enough I just go ahead and I do the whole entire width of it. And then I go ahead and I go up to where some of my peaks are. So as you see, I have this peak and I'm picking these peaks as well. Uh, if I want to increase the sensitivity, I can go this way or that way. Uh, if I wanted to, I could, do I could do regions by adding regions here or removing them. But I just do it all as one. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and go to save. Saving, does, pressing that save button does not save the spectrum. That just saves the fact that your peaks have been picked. What you then have to do is you go here to file, export, and it'll bring you to, these, to this folder. So I'm going to go ahead and find mine under Rustin. As you see, the file name is already filled, and you want it to save as a SPA file. Uh, we really don't have anything else that, if it were to have PDF or something, that we could keep it as. But SPA file is, is suitable, and we click Save. So now, whenever you come back to this laptop or to this computer, you can now go to Open, and you can go into the files in order to find yours. So. As you see, 500-4. So one more thing that we have to do is we go to Create Report. With that, you will see this screen come up. I do the single spectrum. I, don't, I make sure that I click on it. Format in print. Report title is the name of your compound. So Create. And you should get a secondary window like this, and then a tertiary, and then a third with the printer. So print. So we have just pressed print, and we will see our, so here you can hear it printing. After every use, you have to make sure that you clean off the detector. So you can use either acetone or methanol to do so. So you cannot get this sample back, but you do have to clean it off. So now you just wind this up just how you did when you pushed it down. You just do it the opposite way. A Kim wipe with some acetone on it. 
and you just make sure that that surface is rid of your sample and make sure that you get the arm as well as there may have been some transference of your compound onto it and now the IR is ready for the next sample So I have ran my second sample now. If you run consecutive samples, what you might notice is that I have both of them on here. But I can go ahead and if you click this I, you'll get a slash over it and that will actually get rid of the uh, spectra that you're trying to get rid of. So I could even add the background on here if I thought, oh, hey, that actually looks like carbon dioxide. I could actually have that on there, but since I know that it's, I don't need the background and I don't need my previous sample, as you see here, it actually has the background drawn of what it used as the background, so that is in the information. You can actually see that under each one by using this drop down. So once you get it printed, this piece of paper is then uh, scanned and you then put this into your characterization folder you put this physical copy in the characterization folder and you get and you move the scanned copy into the computational folder so with that that is how you take an IR and get the data processed stay tuned for our next video